Christopher, I said, I have to get to the lab. He said, well, I'm hungry. By the way, Christopher is sort of a high-maintenance guy. I mean, he's a really, he's a sweetheart, but he's, you know, he was hungry. So I said, well, the only food that I could possibly imagine that we'd have time to get would be fast food at the Costco. So he said, fine. So I bought him some sort of chicken and cheese sandwich, and we sit down. And then he says, Gary, look. And what are we sitting against? Across the, the, the hall from us is this long chain link fence with rows and rows of tires, just like he had drawn in his dream. Wow. Now remember, this is not part of the quote experiment, right? This is post-experiment, but there is the evidence. So now I'm looking at this chain link fence with the tires, and then he says, Gary, look around. Umbrellas. And I realized that here we are in Costco. This is indoors. But the area where they, where they feed you for, these, for food there must have been 15 large, round picnic tables, each of which had these gigantic umbrellas in it. You have to understand this is indoors. Yeah, There's indoors. No I got it. <laughs> it's gigantic umbrellas. So now I'm looking at these umbrellas and saying, what's the probability of this? And then I noticed there was writing on the umbrellas. And I read that writing, and I... I realized that I would never forget this for as long as I lived. The writing was advertising for Hebrew national hot dogs. And their slogan prominently displayed on the umbrellas was, quote, we answer to a higher authority, unquote. Oh, my goodness. Ergo, the spirit of God. Now, when I put all that information together to try to calculate the probability that anybody could have known that level of detail, and all of a sudden, I was left having to ponder what kind of a system, what kind of a non-random, super-intelligent system could not only orchestrate potentially all of this, but make it possible to demonstrate it and for some human being to potentially sense it. And it was that critical day in the experiment that my eyes opened to the possibility that there was some sort of higher intelligence operating behind the experiment that I had to open my eyes to, that there was more to this than just detecting catastrophes in the future or, you know, dangerous events happening. But there was something greater going on. By the way, and then we can, we can ask some questions about this, and we'll, we can talk to the, about the critical day 10 when I, when I was forced to entertain the God hypothesis. Midway through this whole process, I think it was day three or day four, I, I I have the, it's in the book, but I don't remember the details right now. Christopher had a, quote, nightmare. Now, this is a man, by the way, who regularly dreams about murders and mayhem and, you know, horrible things happening, terrorist activities and so on. Um, but he had a nightmare, and he shared this nightmare with multiple people, including just people that he met in the bar at the hotel. And what he shared with me was he said, Gary, he said, um, are we going to somewhere in the East Coast, possibly New York? And I said, no. He said, well, I had this dream of planes crashing into tall buildings and thousands of people dying. Now, remember, this was in August of 2001. And I said, planes crashing into tall buildings? I said, I have no idea what you're talking about, Christopher. I said, if, if this is something that you think is potentially going to happen, you should call your operatives in, in, uh, in England. And I said, but I have no idea what it is. It has nothing to do with this experiment as far as I know. And unless you have any specific details about this, I don't know what to say. So I dismissed it. And we went on with the experiment. When he returned from England after this extraordinarily successful experiment, his dreams about these planes crashing into tall buildings continued. And... Um, Literally two days before um, uh, 9 11, 
And by the way, he would call me every now and again and tell me that these things were happening. I couldn't even fathom that. I mean, it's so much beyond my, beyond my imagination. You were talking about beyond imagination before early in your opening comments. And the, uh, when, I, when I learned this, I said, look, Christopher, I said, if you're having details about when you think something like this is going to happen and you know where it's going to happen, you should contact the London Embassy or the U.S. Embassy. I don't know what to tell you. And um, he did. He actually sent a DVD of the 10-day in Arizona experiment to show that a scientist had actually looked at what he was doing, that he did have a history, that he had important information. He couldn't share it. He, he needed to share it in person. He wasn't just going to put it into an envelope. Um, and he had it delivered to the, to the embassy. Um, they did not get back to him within the, certainly within the time frame. And then 9-11 happened. Mm-mm-mm. Well, there are so many people talking about the universe this or the universe that and you know all you know are all the events even seemingly unimportant things like you know words on umbrellas or water tank or that that happen in the universe are they all recorded somewhere in a kind of uh future hard drive that people like christopher can access and then bring back to the present uh, because, you know, I could see big events like 9-11 or earthquakes or, you know, things like that. But, you know, the idea that we're going to go 10 of 20 different places and I want to see how closely you can predict where we're going to go and what you're going to see when we get there. It's clear that that Chris was able to receive or or to send out his consciousness into the future and and get very, very accurate data, lots of it, about where you were going to be and what you were going to see. So it it does open the idea that perhaps consciousness or awareness can can stretch out to that point. And I guess the question I have is, is it is it the unconscious that does that? And Chris has just learned how to communicate so well with his unconscious mind through his conscious mind, that he can bring it back and and give it to Gary. Well, uh, that is a great, obviously that is a super great question. What Christopher believes, and the conclusion that I was led to come to after the tenth day, we can talk about that that those the, the days nine and ten, so you so you can really understand how I came to this conclusion, was not that his consciousness went into the future but rather information was given to him about the future. And there's a a big distinction between whether we reach into the future or whether the future is, quote, given to us. Oh, yes, I would say so, yeah. And what he suggested was that the information was actually being provided by other, for example, in his dreams, he would often receive assistance, supposedly, from deceased policemen or deceased people who had been murdered who would give him information. Or he believes that, um, and I was, of course, completely agnostic about this, um, that he receives information directly from the source. And it's not like he can just go to the library, if you would, and look up a piece of information and read it from a book or a hard drive. But instead... He has to request the information, and then an intelligence will dictate what information is given to him and in what form. And it's it's the it's the it's this the the not so much the taking of information, but the 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 being gifted of information. That that is what led me to uh, to be open to the idea that this might be uh, a process that was mediated by, um, by higher spiritual beings and, and ultimately the highest of intelligence. And maybe if I might give you, uh, since we have the time, if we do, to share with you and your, and your listeners day nine and ten. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds good. Yeah, because that will then help us put, of course, the rest of the book in context. Um, because this, it, this, it was partly this experiment that convinced me that I had to share the rest of what became the God Experiments book. Um, it was now day nine. And again, Christopher had been accurate on eight days. 
And my writing partner um, wanted to 